Welcome back to The Engineered Angler. I'm finally getting around to doing a video on how I made this tool to make these snells. And these are wire snells on just a standard straight shank hook. And I demonstrated using them on the video where I made my simple little spinner baits. And the snell is used to fix the wire to the hook. And that really is the simplest way I know to do this without melting lead to pour your lead jig head. So the tool is something I came up with a few months ago. It's a modification of a hemostat and most of you guys have uh, these kinds of little hemostats. And the tool over here started out uh, like this little curved hemostat over here. So there's a little bit of cutting, there's a little bit of drilling, there's a little bit of filing uh, just to get it shaped right. But otherwise it's a pretty simple little project. Let me demonstrate how it works first and then we'll get to doing the actual build. So the trick is to take a standard uh, 4 aught O'Shaughnessy bend hook and create a snell with a wire instead of a line. To do that I've got to have it mounted to something that holds it out so I can work with it. So I clamped it to a vice grip and then uh, put that vice grip in my vise. Let's do a quick demonstration with this wire. This is kind of a middle of the road wire. It's the wire I use uh, to make the, uh, the spinner baits. So you come in from the side of the eye uh, away from the hook point and you give yourself about an inch and a half and then you want to go ahead and just kind of rotate it. You have the standing part of the wire pointing straight back. You end up with a little S turn and then you want to bring this around so the tail end is kind of perpendicular to the rest of everything else. There's a gap in the tool right here for the hook shank and then there is and then there's a slot for the actual wire so let me show you that little slot holds the wire as you rotate and then if you angle it it'll give you a loose helical uh, winding uh, but if you keep it perpendicular it'll give you a nice tight winding and it's pretty easy to control and then you can just kind of spin it around and you end up with a nice uniform barrel twist there uh, that you can then further strengthen with a little bit of glue if you want to. Otherwise, that's not coming out of there. So let's go ahead and move on to making the tool itself. So I'll be making the tool out of one of these uh, little 6-inch hemostats. You don't have to have a super expensive hemostat. These are the inexpensive Chinese ones you can pick up online. What you want to check for is to make sure that the little locking barbs are in good shape so it locks up and it won't come off easily. If you're going to be bending heavy wire though, anything over uh, the 0 0.05 inch diameter, uh, I recommend going with a heavier, probably a 10 inch uh, hemostat. So the first thing we need to do is cut this curve off the tip. I'm going to cut so that I have about 3 eighths of an inch left on my jaw. If you're in doubt about the length, you can always leave a little long and then uh, grind it back. Okay, so the next step is to drill that little hole right there uh, into the new one. And there's nothing special about that hole in particular. Uh, it just needs to be big enough to go around the shank of the hook you're going to be using but be loose enough that it'll spin. But let me measure the diameter of the shank so you know what it is. It's 1.9 millimeters or 0 0.0755 inches. Look for a 564th inch uh, bit. So I'm going with the 564th. So you can see the location of the hole is going to be, will be just above the end of the jaw down here. I want to have this one just a little lower than I did this one. The shorter the distance uh, from the tool area down to the pivot point, the more leverage you're going to have and the better grip you'll have. So the key to drilling this hole is to pinch this in the vise really well so it doesn't want to open. Gotta clean it up a little bit. So the next step is to cut this slot. You can see 
that's cut all the way through both sides. And the top of that slot has to be at the top of the hole. And you do that with a file. So to file this, I'm going to have to go out to the other shop where I can have a steel jaw vise to hold on to this thing. Okay, so we're working here. Now I'm going to go ahead and use a bastard file that has a cutting edge. And that's about 3 sixteenths or 5 30 seconds, somewhere around there. You can refine that for your wire. The thicker the wire that you're going to be using to do these snells, the bigger the slot you want in your tool head. Now you can get this work started with a hacksaw blade and just just so that you don't go beyond where you really want to go. But I like using the, the corners of these files and laying in a nice line. And this is just a matter of being very patient and getting your cut in. And you're going to have to go down about halfway through the thickness of these jaws. And you can see pretty quickly uh, this slot starts to form. And with a little patience, uh, it really doesn't take very long for you to start to develop uh, that nice groove. You just got to go another, uh, I got to go another millimeter down and then we'll get back to the next step. All right, so there's my slot and it's cut about halfway through. So now we got uh, one more, well, maybe two more steps. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with the slot I just cut. And there's a couple more steps to do. They're both about as rudimentary. So the next step is to cut one of these lobes off. You want to cut the little top lobe off that isn't going to be doing the, the twisting of the wire. So unless you plan to twist in the other direction, uh, you want to take off the one on this side. So as you're looking at the slot, the one on the right, you got to remove. And that's just more hacksaw work. So you see, I cut off that lobe, and I left a little bit of the top of that bore on there. So here's one that I had already done, and you can see on the lobe that's left, you can see that there's a little slot cut in there. A little slot catches the wire and twists it around the shank of the hook. You can put that slot in with just a really small file and just run it across, uh, or you can use a little Dremel disc. Uh, which is what I'm going to do because it'll just go a little faster. Okay, and this little slot should favor the hollow side. And so we'll just get it going. And it really doesn't take much. You can see that little slot right there, I hope. That should do it. This tool is done. Okay, so here it is. Uh, hopefully you can see that little slot I put in it right there. Uh, you can see the original hole and that most of it is left. So let's take this thing and make some snells. So I'm going to go ahead and do a demonstration of the tool and I'm going to do three different size wires. Uh, first, I'll start off with the thinnest, and this is a leader wire at 0 0.028 inches or 0.77 millimeters. And then we'll move on to this wire, which is more typical of spinner baits, 0 0.038 inches or 0 0.90 millimeters. And then we'll go ahead and move to the big guy, which is uh, 0 0.05 inches uh, or 1.28 millimeters. Okay, so first wire is this. Uh, leader wire it's 0.77 millimeter stainless steel let's get that looks pretty good let's move on okay let's move on to 0.9 millimeter 
stainless steel. Okay, now this is 1.23 uh, titanium welding wire. And now the heaviest wire I have, which is stainless steel 1.31 millimeter. Here we go. There we go. Oh, I think it did it, but that is the max it can handle. You know, I'd like to leave one last really good tip. Uh, for the very end, for those of you who've had the patience to uh, watch the whole video, I got one last tip for you. But before I show it to you, if you enjoy these kind of videos, subscribe and offer me up your opinion on what I should do next. And share it with a friend. Now let me show you the tip. These hemostats are really cheap online. Uh, I bought uh, 12 for like $12. And so it makes it real tempting to use them for holding your lures while you're painting or while you're turning it. You've probably noticed that if you want a good grip on your lure, you got to lower the lure down inside the jaws. You end up with kind of an awkward grip with these things kind of going off on an angle. There's a little better way. It's not hard to do and it actually gives you a lot more leverage. So what I do is I take the standard uh, hemostat and I cut the end off so that there's only about an eighth of an inch of actual jaw. That gives you a lot more leverage with those little jaws and you're able to hold on to a, a good sized lure without worrying that it's going to fall or move around on you and it stays pretty much aligned. So give that a shot, especially considering how inexpensive these guys are and how easy uh, they are to work. So I've got to go in and get my Corona haircut. My wife's going to cut my hair so I'm glad I'm working from home.